It's 2024, you have a PC and you're trying to figure out what is the best controller that is out there in the market that you can get your hands on. Not everybody likes a game on a keyboard and mouse. And not every game can really play on a keyboard and mouse. So what controllers do we exactly have in the PC market? And there is a large variation because you're not locked in into one console. You can pick many controllers and most consoles are compatible when it comes to their controllers and to their PC. So I got to tell you which one is the best controller and exactly why. But let's take a look. We have the Envision Pro. We have the Xbox Series X controller and we also have the DualSense Edge controller. Personally to me, it would have been better if I brought over a Xbox Elite version 2 controller because then it would be more of a fair battle. But I will mention the specifications for it so you guys can have an idea. First thing I'm gonna mention, what do these controllers come with? And we'll start with the Xbox Series X controller. Now it's a standard controller. It is priced at $59.99 at current market price. You do get the Xbox Series X controller, of course. You get AA batteries and the battery uh, pack, so you can put the AA batteries. It does not come with rechargeable batteries, nor does it come with a USB-C cable. It just plugs in with any type of USB-C cable here. Microsoft does not come packed with it. They do sell Xbox controllers where they have kits where it has the rechargeable plug and play kit with the actual battery. For the Xbox Elite version two, four extra paddles in the back of it. And it also has interchangeable thumbsticks. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show to you right now, but it also comes with rechargeable batteries as well. When it comes to the DualSense controller, right now I got the DualSense Edge that I can show you. It's pretty impressive for what DualSense Edge does offer you, but it is at a much higher price range. You are paying $199.99 USD for this controller. It comes with a nice hard case shell. The feel of it is similar of the controller. So if you're curious about how hard the shelf actually feels, it feels just like the controller that I do have in hand. It is nice quality and it is very drop resistant. I'm not too sure if it's really waterproof. Originally when I first bought the DualSense Edge controller, one of my zippers had an issue. I actually had to send back the whole controller back to Sony, but they replaced it. No problem, no questions asked. I got my replacement and now this is practically the perfect shell. And what the DualSense Edge, it comes with the interchangeable joystick, similar to the DualSense controllers or the DualShock controllers, I should say, if you're familiar with how the DualShock 4 was. And it has a USB-C cable where it prevents you from pulling out the USB-C. You don't pull it while you're gaming and then you lose connection. It makes sure it stays intact. And it also comes with interchangeable paddles. I do have the longer ones installed instead of the shorter ones. Also comes with a nice braided cable here. The braided cable is relatively long. It's about 10 feet. With the standard DualSense controller, that's priced at $69.99. That comes with just the USB-C cable and it does come with a rechargeable battery pack automatically as you cannot really remove the DualSense controller batteries anyway ever since the DualShock 3. For the Scuf Envision Pro, which is also an amazing controller as well for PC that I can't talk enough about, this comes with just the controller itself and a USB-C cable. Also comes with a RF adapter in the box and it also comes with interchangeable joysticks and interchangeable paddles for the back of it and the side action buttons for this controller. Now this is priced at $179.99 USD and they have various colors. You could also customize it as well and get a white one. They also have gray ones. Whatever color that you choose, they have a color palette you can choose from if you choose to get it from the Envision website. But if you purchase it from Best Buy, personally, I do like the gunmetal gray color as it is a stunning, beautiful color. And the white one is also a really nice color. 
Now, they only these are the standard colors for it. And again, that's $179.99. You choose one color that is from the color palette, the price will be marked up another 10 or $15. It doesn't come with any extra case for the Envision Pro, but you can purchase a case for the Envision Pro if you're interested in one. The only controller that really comes with the case is the Xbox Elite 2 controller and the DualSense Edge controller also comes with the case. Envision Pro, you have to purchase the case. It is about $14.99 for the case. Preferably to me, it doesn't really matter. I don't need a case because I'm not really gonna travel around with the controller as much. And if I do, that it would be nice to have a case, but more than likely I'll have it wrapped up safely somewhere. For the Xbox Series X controller, it's 287 grams compared to Xbox Elite version two, which is at a stunning 345 grams of weight. Remember, it does have four extra paddles in the back of it on the side here and here, but again, this is not the Elite controller, but they do have four extra paddles in the back of it, which causes the weight to be a little bit heavier for the Xbox Elite version twos. Now for the DualSense Edge controller, the weight is 335 grams, which is relatively close to the Xbox Elite version two controller. Now the weight's a little bit heavier, again, because this also has paddles in the back, and it also has a built-in rechargeable battery as well, and it also has its haptic feedbacks. Now for the standard DualSense controller, it is at only 281 grams of weight compared to its bigger DualSense Edge. For the Envision Pro, it is the lightest out the bunch because it only weighs 285 grams compared to all the other controllers. It's definitely one of the lightest. You don't have to worry about the endurance of holding the controller for such a long period of time. It's just really comfortable in your hands. For the controller layouts, let's go over the Xbox Series X because everyone, if you're not familiar with how the Xbox Series X controller layout is, because you had a Sony PlayStation for a, a long time and you never really had your hands on it and you're just getting a PC, that's understandable because it's just a really basic concept. They have the A, B, X, and Y. You have your D-pad, you have your joysticks. It is offset compared to the Sony DualSense controller. It also has the triggers in the back of the controller as well, that which are stippled, and it has the left button and the right button. It has a nice resistance grip, so when you're sweating, it, you won't have to worry about really slipping your hands, unless you're really a sweaty person, and then it just goes flying on its own because it is kind of more of a plastic feeling. Uh, the top of it's very plasticky and it's very slippery. You could easily slip on the top of it, but the back texture really helps it. The stippled grip of the Xbox Series X controller does help. The Xbox Elite version two has more stippling in the front as well. So you have more of a tougher grip while gaming. Now, if you have a DualSense Edge controller, this is also pretty slippery in the front of it. It's very tough, very, and the DualSense Edge is the same way. It's very tough and it can be slippery up in the front as well. What helps it is the back, the inner grips actually have more grip on it. If you're not familiar with how a DualSense controller is, it does have a X square triangle and circle as the D-pad and the joysticks. Yes, I said X because it is X. As the left button, as the L1, L2, and as the R1, R2, as they call it. And it does have the paddles in the back of the DualSense Edge controller, which can be swappable to the smaller ones, as I mentioned earlier. Now, if you're playing long periods of time gaming on this, this is pretty nice, but again, it can get pretty slippery. It's probably better to get some sort of rubber grip on the front of it if you just want to make sure that the controller does not slip out. But the back, the inner grips are pretty comfortable. Now for the Envision Pro, it's a little bit different here. As you can see, it has a much larger grip on the back of the controller as well. So it's much more st stipled. Now the front of it, it's different from all the controllers as I mentioned earlier. Now the biggest difference about the Envision Pro controller, yes, it can be a little slippery up in the front. The best way I can describe it is it's kind of a uh, suede feeling, but it's not. Uh, it doesn't mark like suede when you put your thumb across it, just like how suede would, a uh, suede would. But if you look at the controller, it's very 
simple design, A, B, X, and Y, joysticks, D-pad, and it has the left bumper, right bumper, left trigger, and the right trigger, side action buttons, and it also has the inner paddles, and it does have the outer paddles as well. The nice thing about the Envision Pro controller, what makes a big difference between the other controllers, is if you really listen to this controller, it's more clicky, similar to how a mouse is. This is why I really like this controller a lot because it's very responsive and has much shorter travel compared to the other controllers that I've played on. Now with the other controllers, they are decent, such as the Xbox Series X controller. It has a lot more travel, has a lot more distance to get to the point. Sure, you might play games where they are button sensitive, but it can be tweaked when it comes to the settings. And the DualSense controller, when it comes to the travel of their buttons as well, it's kind of mushy as well and soft. So you don't have the clicky resistance or the clicky sound similar to what the Envision Pro, which is very similar to clicking a mouse. As soon as you hit that button, you are certain that you hit that button. Now, most importantly, the way the controllers are connected to the PC, you can connect with the Xbox Series X controller via RF or Bluetooth connection. Now with the PlayStation controller, you only have one choice. You only have Bluetooth connection. Well, that's a lie. Not just one choice because they all can do it. You can also hook it up via USB. So you can either hook it up wirelessly to Bluetooth or you can hook it up via USB. It's the same with the DualSense controller. And for the Envision Pro, you can only hook it up wirelessly via RF. There is no Bluetooth option. So if you have a Asus ROG Ally, you're SOL on that, unless you use a USB hub. The other option you have with the Envision Pro is hooking it up via USB-C, and then you will have no issues with that type of connection. So those are the three different connections for these controllers and the way you can hook it up to your PC. Software wise, within all of them, Xbox is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't know and you're just getting into PCs, you just hook up your Xbox controller. Windows already has this input in, built into it. So once you hook up your controller to your PC, it is pretty much compatible whether you're playing on Steam or you're playing on Blizzard.net or if you're playing on Epic Games. Now, typically it works for most of the time, but sometimes it can act a little bit funny, especially on launchers like Epic Games, where it may not respond as well and you have to tweak some settings. Not really Microsoft's fault, it's more of the launcher's fault when it comes down to that side of things. But if you have the Xbox Elite version 2 controller, you can set up all your different accessories through the Xbox Accessories app on Windows 10 or Windows 11. Really easy to set up. You could even see your battery life when you open up your Xbox Live Launcher. So when you do have this controller, you can easily set it up. Now, I don't know if you would wanna swap out these buttons for X is Y and Y is X, but if you did, you can do it through the Xbox Accessories app and they do have third-party software which you can swap it out with. Now, when it comes to the DualSense controller, you can also program it through a third party software. Originally, when you had the DualSense Edge controller when it first was released, you were not able to set up your different button layouts on the DualSense Edge. But now, since then, you can use the S4 windows in order to configure your buttons for your DualSense Edge. When you do, then you can map out your different profiles. It can fit up to five different profiles, which is really nice. And that's how you would set up their profiles. Now, Sony doesn't have its own software when it comes to PC. They more than likely want you to be forced to use a PlayStation 5 to set up your DualSense Edge, and it is all hardware configured. If you set it up through your PlayStation 5, your profiles will also be compatible with your PC with the same exact settings, the same dead zones, or whichever that you chose for this controller. Now, when it comes to DS4 Windows, you can do the same exact thing. You can set up your back triggers back here and set up your different profiles, which is a video that I gotta post up. And when I do, I'll make sure to put the e card above. You can set this up via Windows, no worries, if you're thinking about getting the DualSense Edge. Now, when it comes to the Scuf Envision Pro, this hooks up through IQ. 
the most dreaded software that most people that own a PC know about. Everybody dreads Corsair recently. It used to be the best when it came to their products, when it came to their RGBs, but with their recent update with IQ5, it's been giving a lot of headaches. And if you don't really like IQ and you're thinking about the Envision Pro, fortunately you have to use IQ in order to set this up. But there is a silver lining in the news. When you do get into IQ, you can set it up via hardware similar to DualSense Edge controller. Now, when you do, you can set up your back triggers right here and your side action buttons. Now, those are the ones that you really have to set up through Corsair. And the good news is once you set those up via hardware and not the actual software, because you can set it up for software configuration or hardware configuration. If you set it up through hardware configuration, you can get rid of IQ and you can completely forget about it then and you can game on afterwards. If you do want to change out the profile or you want to make some modifications, unfortunately, you have to use IQ to do the whole side action buttons and the back triggers of the controller and the back pedals. But it is really good at setting up macros if IQ works correctly. Now, when it comes to the controller's battery life, this is what I wanted to get to, especially because for you guys, this is the most important part if you do not want to be hooked up via USB-C. With the battery life, with the Xbox Series X controller, it's an excellent controller to game on because you can game up to 25 to 30 hours on the battery. Now, the bad note I do gotta say when it does come to their Xbox controllers is if you have the rechargeable battery pack, and you haven't played your controller in a while, it can act a little bit finicky. Meaning when you charge, you attempt to charge up your Xbox controller, you can't really see it charging. It doesn't have any indication that it is charging. It doesn't have a light in the front that it, to let you know it's charging. And when you even check the Xbox app on the PC itself, it doesn't, it shows you that it's charging, but doesn't really give you an indication of how much charge is left in the actual Xbox. Series X controller, or when it comes to their Xbox Elite version two controllers. Sometimes you gotta play with it, and the most annoying part is if you haven't used your Xbox controller in a while, and you're playing games such as Call of Duty, or Battlefield, or if you're into fighting games such as Mortal Kombat, or Street Fighter, then you run into the issue of the controller shutting down mid-game, especially when you are in a important critical zone, and nobody likes that. And I especially don't like that especially when it comes to the controller. So if I'm gaming on a Xbox controller, I will have it hooked up at USB-C most of the time, just so that I know the batteries won't fail. Now, when it comes to the DualSense Edge controller, it is super reliable, but the only issue I have with the DualSense Edge controller, it uses a 1050 milliamp hour battery meaning that the battery is a lot smaller compared to a standard DualSense controller, which is 1560 milliamp battery. It's a little bit larger compared to this. So this controller, you could only game up to four to six hours on it. So it can be a big pain on that side when you are gaming with this controller because it does die down pretty quickly. It charges up relatively quickly, but it also dies relatively quickly. Now, the good thing is the Xbox controller and the DualSense controller, you can hook them up to your Asus ROG Ally with no issue via Bluetooth. Now, lastly, the Scuf Envision controller is also a great choice. Now I've gained 20 hours of game time on this controller. Now you can do a lot longer than that. You could have 30 hour sessions easily. Now that's with 77 hours standby time I actually had with the Envision Pro controller. So it lasts a lot longer out Xbox controller and the Xbox Elite version twos and the DualSense and the DualSense Edge. Personally, the Envision Pro definitely had the battery batter life compared to all of them. How is it when it comes to the gaming compatibility? When it comes to the Xbox Series X controller and it comes to the Scuf and Vision Pro, they are the masters at compatibility when it comes to PC gaming. Now, if you're looking for a very reliable controller, these two would be the ones to get for PC because every game just about recognizes the controller. You don't really have to mess around with any hardware configurations just for it to work. Now, when it comes to the DualSense controller, it is also a great and reliable controller, but the only problem is a lot of the, their inputs 
such as QTE events or when you have uh, moments in games where you enter a cutscene where you want to skip a cutscene, it will say hit A instead of hitting X. Now that can be a pain when you do have a D dual sense edge where you it doesn't tell you to hit the correct controls. A lot of times the controls will tell you to hit A, B, X, and Y because that's pretty much standard for Windows. You can swap them out and there is different modifications. So if you don't really like to deal with that kind of stuff, the DualSense Edge or the standard DualSense controller can be a little bit of a pain. If you don't really mind the different control layouts that they tell you on PC, then it shouldn't really bother you. Which one is really the best controller for PC? And personally to me, I've gotta say it goes to the Envision Pro first. Now for the second best controller, I would have to say it would go to the Xbox controller. Originally, I had the DualSense controller listed up there, but because of its battery life, the Xbox battery life isn't the greatest. Uh, personally, to me, I would give them both the same type of treatment. I would say they're probably both equal in its own way because they kind of balance out on their own. But this slightly is a little bit higher now on my list compared to a DualSense edge controller but the good thing is with the DualSense controller they do have haptic feedbacks if you're playing games such as metro exodus there are certain games out there that does feature haptic feedback such as playstation games that are offered in steam all the controllers that i did mention all the higher versions of the controllers like the uh, DualSense edge or the, the xbox elite 2 or the envision pro they all have adjustable triggers on there so you can easily set them up fam man, guys i hope you found this content pretty useful if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up if you know anybody else who is looking for a pc controller make sure you share this video with them and also if you're not part of the big wonderful fam man, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more and don't forget to hit the notification bell for all the newest updates make sure you follow my x handle right here as it is the same as my tick TikTok and IG as well. So fan bam guys, what con well so fan bam guys, what controller do you game with? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.